If you're anything like me, well, firstly, you have my deepest sympathy, but secondly, you might have previously spent a certain portion of your life pondering who is the most prolific goalscorer of all time. Firstly, I ought to establish what I mean when I say prolific. The dictionary provides four definitions, ranging from a plant that produces lots of fruit to an artist, author, or composer who produces many works. In a footballing context, I use prolific to mean a goalscorer's rate of return. It's not the same as the highest scoring footballer, which is just a simple look at a player's all-time goals tally, but rather it involves dividing the number of goals a player has scored by the number of games they've played to find their all-time goals per game record. That is what I mean when I talk about the most prolific footballers of all time. Goals, it is often said, are the currency of football, and over the last 10 to 15 years, we've had two players with more currency than a Bure and a change. Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo have scored with a level of consistency and longevity that some felt was no longer possible at the highest level. Combining their club and international goalscoring records, which is what I'll be doing with every player, Ronaldo has averaged 0.72 goals per game since making his debut at Sporting Club to Portugal in 2002. Lionel Messi's career began around 12 months later, and he has since averaged 0.79 goals per game. Look back another few years and you will soon stumble upon Romario, one of the greatest centre forwards of all time, who averaged 0.76 goals per game, putting him pretty much midway between Ronaldo and Messi, which isn't bad company to be in. Romario's record is arguably made even more impressive by the fact he didn't fully retire until the age of 43, obviously weakening his record with his later years. Although you could easily make the counter-argument that Messi and Ronaldo have already spent longer than Romario did, pitting their wits against the finest the world game has to offer. Whilst a number of players, including Messi, Ronaldo and Romario, have all averaged a goal a game or even better at stages in their careers, it is remarkably rare for a player to be able to maintain that rate of return throughout an entire career, ranging from their debut most likely in their teens, all the way up to their retirement, possibly then into their 40s in the case of someone like Romario. You can almost count on one hand the number of players who belong to that exclusive club, starting with Bernabe Ferreira, who was once the most expensive footballer of all time. Ferreira joined River Plate from Tigre for $50,000 in 1932, more than doubling the world record fee at the time, and his record wouldn't be beaten for a whopping 17 years, making it the longest standing world record fee of all time. River were at least well rewarded for the enormous fee they forked out for the Argentine, who is the only player in the history of the Argentine game to have scored more goals than the number of league games in which he played. In total, Ferreira scored 232 goals in 232 games, giving him an exact 1 to 1 goals to game ratio, making him the ideal starting point in any discussion regarding the sport's most prolific scorers. Celtic legend Jimmy McGrory can narrowly better Ferreira's record, standing proudly as the most prolific British footballer of all time. McGrory also averaged almost exactly a goal a game, with 544 goals in 541 games, scoring all but 16 of those goals for either Celtic or the Scotland national team. Star of the pre- and interwar era of the Austrian game Franz Binder can better that, having scored 293 goals in 270 games for Austria Vienna, the Austrian national team, and the German national team, a record which gives him an average of 1.08 goals per game. Binder made 9 appearances and scored 10 goals for Germany following the Anschluss, but returned to the Austrian national team after the war. A few years earlier in neighbouring Hungary, there had been an even more prolific marksman by the name of Imre Schosser. A devastating goal scorer who once scored six goals in a single game for Hungary against Switzerland, Schlosser bagged a career total of 476 goals in 388 games for club and country, averaging a sensational 1.22 goals per game. Staying in Central Europe, the third most prolific footballer of all time as far as I'm aware is Josef Bikan. As quick as an Olympic sprinter and as deadly as Ruud van Nisseroy, Bikan bagged 476 goals in 388 officially recognised fixtures an average of 1.44 goals per game. Now, the prevailing opinion appears to be that only one man has ever scored more frequently than Joseph Bican, and his name is Fernando Perotio. A big, powerful striker who was two-footed, dominant in the air, and lethal with both feet, Perotio spent his entire club career with Sporting Club de Portugal. A club and international level, he found the back of the net 347 times in 217 games, an extraordinary record, which meant he averaged 1.59 goals per game. That makes him twice as prolific as Lionel Messi, and more than twice as prolific as his fellow countryman Cristiano Ronaldo, which just seems frankly absurd for a generation team it feels as though Messi and Ronaldo have scored with near alien-like consistency over the last decade. Incredibly though, Fernando Perotio is not the most prolific goalscorer of all time. Indeed, he isn't even close. In Belo Horizonte back in the 1920s, Brazilian football was still in its infancy. 
teams played in regional leagues with clusters of talent in Rio de Janeiro and in Sao Paulo. 400 kilometers north of Rio though, in the city of Belo Horizonte, word was spreading of a team who could mix it with the best that Brazil had to offer. Founded in 1908, Atletico Mineiro had won just one state championship prior to 1926, which came in 1950. However, everything changed in 1926 when Atletico signed a man who would become the most prolific goalscorer of all time. Between the years 1927 and 1931, Atletico Mineiro had perhaps the most deadly attacking trio that the game has ever seen. The club's front three, which became known as the Trio Maldito, or the Unholy Trio, were a combination of three intellectuals, two studying medicine and one studying law, who continually delayed their degrees in favour of their first love, football. Mario de Castro is the best known of the three, by virtue of his strong claims, to have the best goals to game ratio in footballing history, but the tale of all three is one that is scarcely told outside of Brazil. All three players showed exceptional academic promise as youngsters, and as such, their parents were keen for them to utilise their intellectual prowess in the pursuit of respectable careers and professions. The trio all headed off to university to hone their chosen disciplines. Mario de Castro and Jair de Assis Almeida both studied medicine, while Saeed Paul Arges studied law. Fatherless, Castro was brought up by his widowed mother and four siblings, and it was his mother who took a particularly hard line on the son's sporting intentions, banning him from even playing football from a young age, in the fear that he might one day favour the sport over a more solid and better paid career. Castro feared going against his mother's will, but could not relinquish his love of the game, and chose instead to play under a false name to ensure she would never hear or see his name on the radio or in newspapers. Castro hence became known to the footballing world simply as Oriam, which is an anagram of his first name Mario. He began playing for Atletico in 1926, aged 21. In his Gallo debut, Castro scored three times, as the club ran out 6-0 victors against crosstown rivals America Mineiro, in a win which saw the club lift the 1926 Mineiro Championship. His debut set the tone, and both Castro and Atletico experienced great success over the next five years, winning titles in 1926, 1927, and 1931, with Castro as the division's top scorer in 1926 and 1927. Castro became the first player from outside of Rio or Sao Paulo to be called up to the Brazilian national team for the inaugural FIFA World Cup in 1930, but turned down the offer when he was informed that he would be second choice to Botafogo striker Carvalho Liete. As such, the Rio-Sao Paulo axis remained unbroken, and Brazil failed at the World Cup, being knocked down the group stages as Yugoslavia topped their group. In August 1930, just months after the World Cup, Castro faced Liete as Botafogo and Atletico played in a double-leg tie. In Atletico, the home side won 3-2 as Castro completed a wonderful hat-trick and Liete failed to find the net. In the return leg, it was Botafogo at the upper hand, winning 6-3 as Liete struck three times and Castro twice. Whilst Castro was always the star of the three, both Jairo and Said were regarded as exceptional footballers in their own right. Said was supposed to complete his law degree by 1932, but became so enveloped in football that it took him until 1942. Known as something of an eccentric, Said was apparently a reserved individual who only opened up to those closest to him. He never practiced law, despite attaining his degree, choosing instead to become a TV director, where he worked for Belo Horizonte Network, TV Villa Rica. He played for Atletico from 1926 to 1932, before briefly returning in 1934, scoring a grand total of 142 goals, largely from the right wing. He passed away in 1994, aged 89. Jairo, meanwhile, a fellow student of medicine with Castro, was a year older than Castro and Said, but joined Atletico a year later, making his debut aged 23 in 1927. The most industrious of the trio, Jairo was a supremely fit athlete, who struggled to divide his time between studying and working out in the gym. He left Atletico in 1933, having scored 122 goals. Very little is known of Jairo's post-footballing life, but we do know he died in 1987, living in Belo Horizonte until he was 83. All three players retired before the age of 30, but it's the story of Castro's retirement which is the most tragic. Aged 26, he was still the most prolific striker in Brazil when he retired. In Atletico's final game of the season, they needed a win in order to ensure the Mineiro Championship title would be theirs. Things were not going to scripts as the side were 3-0 down to Villanova at half-time, and in the second half, Castro made history, netting a staggering four goals to clinch a 4-3 victory for Atletico and with that, yet another title. In the aftermath of the game, however, the celebrations grew wildly out of hand, and one of the Atletico directors shot and killed a Villanova supporter. 
Shocked and outraged by the incident, Castro refused to play for the club again and hung up his boots at just 26. Upon retirement, Castro had scored 195 goals in 100 games. His record of 1.95 goals per game, as far as I'm aware, is the most clinical in the history of the game, greater even than that of sporting striker Fernando Perezio. Castro practiced medicine for 22 years in Belo Horizonte, providing service to many in the region and furthering his reputation as a local hero. His story of footballing brilliance will be forever blighted by the tragedy which marked the end of his career, but in Atletico, the legend of the Trio Maldito still remains. The club honoured their contribution in 2008 at Atletico's 100 year anniversary. Thank you for watching today's video. I apologise that we don't have more images of many of the players referenced, and therefore it's probably best to treat some of these documentary style pieces more like podcasts than videos. Let me know in the comments if there are any other goal getters with a better than 1 in 1 ratio that I failed to mention, or even if you think there's someone who might be able to better De Castro's 1.95 goals per game record. Not your mate Steve from down at the Dog and Duck, someone at a decent level of football preferably. Right, thank you all again for watching and listening, don't hesitate to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and feel free to subscribe to HITC7 and turn on notifications if you'd like to see more from me in the future.